Hello everybody and welcome to the Bristly Strangers channel. My name is Stinger from Stinger's Playground. With me is Ricketts. Hello. And today we're going to be recapping the Little Stinkers versus the Sales Reptiles. Now the Little Stinkers is my team and the Sales Reptiles is Princess Baxter's or Becky's team. What can we expect to see a uh, from a game from the Chaos Dwarves versus the Lizardmen? Well, Chaos Dwarves, a very versatile team. They've got the they've got the sort of armor and skills on the Chaos Dwarf blockers. So they've got block, thick skull, tackle. Uh, but you've got a bit of speed there as well with the bull centaurs and the hobgoblins. Uh, now, you can get a minotaur. I know, Stinger, you haven't got a minotaur on your team. No. Um, but the uh, but you do have a bit of extra movement there, so that's a bit of a difference there from from a regular dwarf team, and also the fact you can get mutations on a double on those ones. And the sales reptiles, the lizard men team, obviously very very quick. You know, movement of six on those sauruses, movement of eight on the skinks. You know, they've got they've got some they've got some very good movement. So it'll be whether or not they can they can outmaneuver the uh, the chaos dwarves. So very interesting to see how it goes. Exactly. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into the game and see how it plays out. And here we are at the Theatre of Screams. So it's the Little Stinkers Stadium. So a good mixture of players there on the little stinkers side. Bull centaurs there looking very scary. And here we go, the lizard men. A mixture of muscle and scale and small nippy frog like. I'm really loving the tiger or the zebra stripes on these two. Yeah, very good. Very striking. So, looks like the sales reptiles won and have, uh, to, have forced the chaos dwarves to uh, set up first. And and you can see it's a very aggressive strategy there by uh, Princess Baxter there with her um, sauruses right up the front and to the right there of the screen. And here we go. And it's changing weather nice. So scatter an extra uh, extra square. Skink there going back a little bit. These skinks can sure move around the field pretty quick. And here we go. Yeah, and we've got a we've got a block, but that was just a push back. Skink moving up and into contact with the Chaos Dwarf. Providing that assist. And then yeah, providing that assist there. And here comes the blitz. Three, Three dice. dice. That'll do it. But dwarf, the dwarf's got very high armor, so that doesn't go through the armor. And they pick up the ball and run it straight forward. Just to push. Not following up, I see. Which means the Chaos Dwarves are only going to get the one blitz. That's all they're going to get because they're not in combat with, uh, they're not in contact with any any of the uh, sales reptile team. I think I was moving that bull centaur back just in case because those kinks can really move quickly. A That's bit right. Of safety. Here's the blitz. Against the skink. Oh, double skulls. Oh, double skull. Okay, push. The push. Definitely not how I was hoping that would turn out. No, just and doing a bit of uh, maneuvering around. Probably would be better if the hobgoblin had stayed there, because you've just left a line to go down for that skink yes. to run down. Yes, I did make a very nice hole for Princess Baxter. You know, always opening doors. And even the Sauruses have got a reasonable move as well. So uh, for for big guys, they've got quite a quite a good movement. And 
here comes the blitz. Yeah, they, yep. And that, that'll do it. Knock down. And not following up. Oh, and now following up. Yeah. So there is a big, big old conga line of um, sauruses and skinks there to uh, just to help the the skink, uh, the skink who's got the ball, to uh, to have a have an uninterrupted run down the down the side there. Yeah, now that she's committed to that side, though, I'm trying to get all the players over to that side of the field. Mm -hmm. Might be a little bit too little too late at this point, though. Yeah, that's the problem with the Chaos Dwarves. The Chaos Dwarves blockers, they've only got a movement of four, so they are very difficult, difficult to reposition. Here comes the blitz. Just to push. But that does put a ball center right at the end, which means that uh, the skin could have to do a fair bit of dodging around. And I'm also trying to position a Chaos Warp Blocker up top so they can't just easily run around the other way. Just to push. And here comes the blitz. On the ball center. I'll do it. That'll knock him over. And here comes the ball carrier. Will we see a handoff? There's the handoff. And a straight line all the way to the end. That's a touchdown. It was a quick touchdown. So at this point, I wasn't too upset about it. I mean not received the ball at the beginning of the match I thought well I could score now and then maybe right at the beginning of the next half and here are the wonderful old cheerleaders <laughs> presenting us with their beauty absolutely tip your waitress everybody yep that's right so we've got we've got a good number of uh, turns for the Chaos Dwarves to uh, equalize so um, got six uh, six turns on for, uh, for Stinger here's the kickoff Quick snap. Quick snap. So that allows all the little stinkers to move one square. There we go. And all lands. Just a push. Oh. Nope. Single dice stumble. block rolls. Yeah. It's one of the reasons why I want to get Guard put on to these Chaos Wars, but none of them have leveled up at this point, so I did not have that. That, that is the knockdown. And just the push. We'll see a Blitz here. Chaos Dwarf against the Skink. There we go, oh. and that's a dead saw. That's a dead skink. Saw loser is dead. She used and her apothecary on a skink. So that's just that's just going to be a miss next game. So a pinch nerve. Uh, that's not too bad. Now, when she did this, I was surprised. He used an apothecary on a skink. Princess Baxter said, "Well, I'm I like the skinks. I like their names. So for the rest of this match, my main goal was to take down a Saurus." <laughs> yeah, it's easier than it sounds, though. Let's see if the ball sender can pick the ball up. Nope, not with that roll. That's on a one, so that was going to fail whoever it was. Elf or anyone else. Just pushing back that Chaos Dwarf blocker. Another two dice against the other next one. Yep, just, just another push. push. Dodging through. Oh. Quite dodging through, and this is a blitz against the other ball center. That'll do it. That'll lock him down. Oh, tackle finally comes into play. And then using the team reroll, and still the tackle works. 
Princess Baxter was lucky that she didn't get a an armor break on that uh, that dodge out. And a blitz already. Yeah. That's enough to knock him down. Why well, I get those sources? Marking up a skink. And bring a Chaos Dwarf Blocker on that down Saurus. In fact, I might be setting up for a foul. I was wanting to get a Saurus real bad. Does look like it, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, Sided against and it, I guess. The, Got the ball. Yeah, and the Hobgoblin picks the ball up and starts moving forward. with a bit of a protection there from the uh, full centre. So, just moving that skink up. There's a lot of unmarked players on the uh, on the right-hand side of the uh, of the pitch. So these uh, skinks can all start repositioning and soak on the sauruses. Oh, that'll do it. That's a, that's a knockdown. Just to push on the Chaos Dwarf Blocker. And a Blitz. Against a Hobgoblin. But just to push again. So dominoing those players over a bit. And Skink. Putting a tackle zone on the ball carrier. Yeah, and there's the, here's the other one doing exactly the same thing. Here comes the Blitz. Two dice. That's enough to knock him down. Did see the foul, which I was which I was expecting to see there. But no, they're getting some more players around that Saurus. Oh, we're definitely setting up for a foul. What is this, gonna be a 100% foul opportunity? Oh, we're going to take care of the other things before we do the foul, I guess. Yep, that's a dodge back. And just pushing the skink away from the uh, the hobgoblin there. And here comes the foul. And that's a knockout. Dirty player, the dirty player skill being being used there very effectively. And he doesn't get sent off either. Always a bonus. And then, yeah, and then just marking up some other players there with the remaining players that they've got left. Just to push re and re-rolling. Yeah. It's a defender down. Again, the skinks there, Mark going to mark back up the uh, the ball carrier and here comes the Saurus with the Blitz and that's enough and the ball's going to go free not caught by the skink We've got quite a few tackle zones on, on, the, on the ball now Skink is trying to pick the ball up and makes it. And that's another touchdown. Two touchdowns in one half. Oh. We can't keep those skinks down. Maybe I shouldn't have fouled. Definitely think that there was a there was a little bit too much focus on trying to foul those Sauruses off the off the pitch. Rather than uh, protecting the ball carrier. Exactly. So, Saurus gets back up from being knocked out. Okay, see how it goes. Those bull centaurs can move pretty quick. In fact, we get a high kick, which means I'm probably going to give it to a bull centaur. It's touch back anyway. So, yeah. uh, well worth giving to the one of the bull centaurs. Sure and enough. The one at, and the one fur, further up as well, which is always a good thing. In fact, I'm blitzing with this one. Kind of risky, especially yep. since it didn't really work out. Not 
not the greatest agility on these bull centaurs, but they are quick. Especially with sure feet and sprint. One dice, that's enough to knock him over. Getting that extra one for the two dice. That's a knockdown. And that's another knockdown because the Chaos Tool's got block. <laughs> and and here comes got another, another foul coming in. Well, she had already used her apothecary, so I said, well, fair game. And that's a knockout. You think your Saurus is out. And the sort and the uh, hobgoblin's not sent off, and they're just repositioning that last chaos dwarf blocker. Bit of repositioning, and there's the blitz. That's knocked down that chaos dwarf blocker. Moving the skink up. Putting a skink in the back just in case. Bit of safety. Another bit of safety there as well. That's going to give a two dice, which is enough to knock him down. And the ball's loose. There's a knockdown, and it's just a stun. Oh. And that's an injury. I saw is injured. No long term hurt. effect. And blitz from the hobgoblin. And do. they got dodge, so just knocks him onto the ball. in an empty space but there are a couple of tackle zones on from both sides actually another one dice and block that, yeah knocked out and stubbly saurus is injured no long term effect but out for the rest of this game mm-hmm just just shows the, the 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 good use of block on those chaos dwarf blockers And marking up the other one to get the other two dice on the other on the other one. Oh. oh, that's bad news. Defender down, that's a turnover. And both of them have blocks, so that was a big waste of nothing. <laughs> That's a failed pickup and still a fumble. Reroll not helping Princess Baxter in that moment. One turn, one turn to go, and straight, straight away to the to the turnover. Sometimes you ever have one of those days where it's just like the dice are not going to go with you no matter what you do. Yeah. And it's, well, that takes us to the halftime. There we go. So it's 2 0 at the moment. So, can the Chaos Dwarves uh, capitalize on the injuries that they've inflicted on the Lizardmen team? Well, the Lizardmen team do get their knocked out player back, but being down three other players, I would hope that I would have a little bit of an advantage. <laughs> And the sales reptiles get an extra team reroll this half with brilliant, brilliant coaching. So Hobgoblin moves up, just marking up the ball. Another one goes over to provide some assist for the other player. That's still enough just to a knock one him down. The, yeah, that's still enough to knock him down. That's two, and that. And then Ooh. both of them have block there. Yeah. Looks like the Hobgoblin going in to pick... Oh, no, it wasn't going to... thought it was going to pick the ball up. 
probably didn't have not quite enough move. Just to push. Marking up, and here's a two dice block, oh. and that's a double skull. So that's a reroll, but that that is pushed, that is turned into a uh, defender down. Turn nine, though, first and turn of the second half, and I'm already down to one reroll left. Just to push on that skink, a bit unfortunate there from that chaos dwarf blocker, and full centaur moving a bit further up. See if they they can provide some support with the ball, and. Oh, failed going for it, and that's a stun. Luckily, he had the thick skull, which otherwise it would have been a knockout. Can't be relying on those uh, going for it, even with sure feet sometimes. You can roll those double ones just as easy as you can, even with a team reroll. And a block, but just to push, just to push back. Lots of dodges there. Successful, though. Hey, that's a knockdown. Uh, dodge through, and is he going to pick the ball up? He does. And throwing it. And that's a throw. And an interception. And an interception. That interception should give him two star player points. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Yeah. So, and th there goes the um, there goes the skink off the pitch. Didn't need to do the reroll. Could have used. Could have just do, done with the um, defender stumbles. That Even with have dodge, would have gone out. It might have yeah. been a misclick. I'm not exactly sure on that. But that will and give Martin. me no rerolls for the rest of the half. Mm. And just providing some protection for the ball carrier. Marking up that Saurus. Same with that Chaos Dwarf there. Forming a little bit of a cage. Just a push from that Saurus. And a blitz. It's two dice on that Chaos Dwarf blocker, which knocks him down. And a knockdown against that Hobgoblin. Goblin. And through that the through the armor. But just the stun. Another, another knockdown. Oh, oh and it's foul with the skink. Fouling the bull centaur. Oh. Gonna dodge like... out. Just moving Chaos Wolf player up a bit. And marking up that skink. Picking a player up and moving him up into contact with that. And here comes the Blitz with the Bull Center. And that's enough. Oh no, that, it's against the Skink. So unfortunately, he has dodge. And moving the Bull Carrier up slightly. Probably probably shouldn't have used the blitz with the ball center against the skink probably would have been better against the skink that's uh, in front of the ball carrier that would have given a bit more movement yeah I believe remembering if I'm remembering correctly I was hoping to pass to that bull centaur so I wanted him to get free ah, right. at least that was the thought at the time and that's a re-roll that's a re-roll there that's knocked him down. Another knockdown on that capsule blocker with Saurus. Looking back on it, Chaos Dwarf team is not really a passing team. But the thought was there. Very much, very much a running team. Oh, and that's a knockout against. Still going for it. Tyra Zolat. 
real opportunity here to get a bit further up the pitch. Straight off with the Blitz. Here comes, yeah, here comes the Blitz with the Chaos Dwarf. Just to push. Pushed up instead of in front of the Centaur. Possibly should have pushed into the in front of the Centaur, so the Centaur could have had a chance at it. Yeah, maybe. Moving that Hobgoblin round. Oh. And, oh, failed going for it roll. A whole lot of reroll, so that's going to make it a turnover. Yep. And moving Saurus up a little bit, and here's the Blitz. So, knocks the Chaos Dwarf down. And still allows the Saurus to reposition. And two dice against the Hobgoblin. That knocks him over and the, the ball's going loose. The ball's not in a horrible place for Stinger. Oh, and a little bit of a glitch <laughs> on that on that skink. Yeah, and the but the skink has got the ball. Kings are really good at getting in and out of tough situations. Mm. Uh, but they're only a strength two and they've got stunty, so they are not the most uh, robust member of the team. Okay, and moving some players back. Looks like everybody's gathering in one spot. It is a... Oh, that's a, that's a defender down. Let's attack her down, that one. Attack her down, so it's a turnover. Oh, that's bad luck. And that's the Hobgoblin down. And knocking the other Hobgoblin down. And... <laughs> a little bit more glitching Just action. A little bit more glitching. Trying to add an, another, and a, there's a Chaos Dwarf down, and that's through the armor. Just a stun. And Here a foul. A foul. Bit risky. One dice. It but is. That's that's a stun, but the but the sort the uh, the but dynamite is sent off. Serves them right, dirty little fowler. I know. So it is just turning into a scrum just inside the Saurus half. Lots of blocks. Two dice there. That knocks him down. Exerting a tackle zone on the ball. And here's the Blitz on the Skink. That's enough to knock him down. Jumping through the armor. Yep. Just a stun though. Ball's not in a bad location either. Moving that Chaos Dwarf blocker up. And the other one. And another one moving up to mark that Saurus. And put as many tackle, ball, uh, tackle zones on that ball as possible. And two dice against, against that Chaos Dwarf blocker. Just pushing him back though. And a one dice against the bull centaur, which results in a turnover. They're both they're both knocked down. Two turns left to go. That's just a block each. And another one. Pushing him back. Pushing him to the edge of allowing, the pitch. Yep. Yeah, allowing a two dice with the Hobgoblin, which is good enough to knock him off the pitch. And he's injured. And that's an injury. Oh, saw it too late. He's injured. No long-term effect. Starting to make a pile of players over on the bench there, but yeah. I think it might be a little too little too late with only two turns left to go. And, and another boat down. Knocked down. And, and Obi-Wan oh. Kenobi is dead. 
Oh, I definitely had to use the apothecary on that. Losing a bull centaur this early in a season would have been devastating. And luckily, he just joins the substitutes. That would have been a lot of uh, a, a lot of gold player dead otherwise. And a two dice on that chaos dwarf blocker, which knocks him off the pitch, and he's injured. No long-term effect. <laughs> last turn. And then this is the last turn. Yeah. Pushing that skink onto the ball. And agility one on those Sauruses means they weren't picking that ball up. I believe they have to roll a six in order to pick the ball up. Is that correct? That's right, yeah. No. It's uh, very unlikely that that's going to happen. And pushing that, that Saurus around. Getting multiple blocks there. Chain block. There we go. And finally knocking him down. Those hobgoblins are on the wrong side of the, uh, of the Saurus line for, for picking the ball up, so... It looks like we're just going to line up go. for a foul instead. Last turn of the game with a foul. Might as well. And just a stun. That's a stun. And on the last turn, that's a knockdown on the Chaos Dwarf by that Saurus. And another one knocks down. And the Skink. Picks the ball up. Will we see a vanity and pass. Yep. And that's a failed catch. We rolled it though. At, and still a failed catch. Just for that, trying to get that extra star player point. But there didn't you happen. go. So well, two nil to the sales reptiles. Two nil and two deaths. Both wiped off the board though with the use of the apothecaries. Having a look at the uh, having a look at the result, um, only very very minimal armor breaks from both sides really nine armor breaks from the little stinkers and five from the sales reptiles the little stinkers actually had more ball possession than the sales reptiles but it just looks like the sales reptiles managed to capitalize on those really fast skinks to get the ball when they did get the ball to get it to get it onto uh, get it past the touchdown line looks like we have a pretty even spread for both teams with Obi-Wan Kenobi getting five star player points, most likely player of the game. Luckily, the Apothecary saved him from death. <laughs> We've got Stinger with four, Mr. Bumbles with two, and Honey I'm Comb with two as well. And then uh, on the sales reptiles, Dinosaur got the uh, got the most valuable player. Tyrannochorus the sinner, singer. Uh, obviously, they're getting a, a touchdown. Saw looks are getting a touchdown as well, and forget you saw us with a looks like a casualty. Going to the dice rolls, we have the little stinkers rolling 16 ones. Seems about average, not the lowest, but definitely not the highest. Had a lot of sixes, it just seemed like those ones came at the most inopportune times. And if you look at the uh, sales reptiles, pr pretty much uh, better on the. Uh, on the higher rolls than on the lower rolls so i think they definitely got the better rolls there well the fewest that she rolled were threes at 15. next was the twos at 16. So oh, yeah 17 ones was the third lowest all right with that becky wins this match two to zero but that's gonna do it for us here on the bristly strangers channel comment like and subscribe let us know what we did right what we did wrong what the coaches did right what the coaches did wrong down in the comments below for the bristly strangers channel my name is stinger with me is ricketts here we are, and we will see you hopefully in the next one